Welcome to the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. This is the real reason tech giants don't want real robots in the United States. Be sure to thumbs up the video. If you're not a subscriber, put, click subscribe and the bell. So clicking the regular subscribe button does not do anything. Only the bell works. I don't know why they even have a subscribe button. Just have a bell button. Should be, right? All right, the business model thus far before tech industry was that when they offered a product, it either you either keep the people coming, the clients coming, and buying the service or product, or you make the product so cheap, cheaply made, that you had to buy it over and over, right? It's like cheap shoes, right? Then you're... Uh, your grandfather tell you never buy cheap shoes, always buy the expensive shoes that you could actually wear your entire life and, you can, and hand it down to your children. You know, you get really expensive shoes. So, when I say to you, and that's a really good example, when I say to you halfway around the world they have made perfect robots, and you say, why don't I see them here in the United States? where we're supposed to be super duper technological more than any other place in the world, which is not true, actually. The answer is simple. While holding on to a computer and merely letting you use a program is the tech giant model. A physical robot in your home would not fly if the tech giant took the position that it was theirs, nor the position that the robot would only last five years to, to be to, to be technical, especially when the price tag is reaching a cool $1 million. So, for those kinds of prices, or the very affordable $345,000, the expectation is that you're getting a perfect, immortal, self-sustaining product, right? The powers that be will not stand for this. For them, to relinquish control over anything these days is anathema to them. And for those of you all who don't know what anathema means, it means they don't, they can't even wrap their head around it, right? Your computer, your phone that you're using to watch me, is not technically owned by you. Nor is any of the software that you use to run your computer or phone. Read the fine print, and you'll see you simply have a license to it. In fact, they call it the end-user license. And in that license, they said, at any time, they can revoke your license, although you paid for it. This would not be the case for a million-dollar robot. People who spend anywhere near that kind of money expect full, total, and complete control over their purchase. At no point is somebody going to step on, on a uh, $20 million yacht and say, well, sorry, sir, you signed a end-user license and we're taking uh, control of the yacht back. No, not going to happen, right? Even worse, uh, the customer would sick an army of lawyer all over the tech people if they gave them such a product that had cameras all over it, collecting data about the client, right? These are important people who live behind high, secure walls. They make people disappear that look at them in their direction a little bit too long, right? They're used to a very different lifestyle. Very private. Don't you dare try and collect uh, data off of me. The tech giants might be billionaires, but very private millionaires don't tolerate the things that the iPhone users take for granted, or Facebook users, or Google users, right? So no, John Doe, unless you're going to get an import, you're not going to see your immortal, forever young, perfect 25-year-old robot wife here in the United States. In America, it would have to come down to around $40,000, have 50 cameras on it, and collect data about every aspect of your life. Spoiler alert, that's not going to happen anytime soon 
in the United States. Your best bet is to become a millionaire and make a visit to Japan in that order. This final picture is of the robot perfect girlfriend, quote unquote, in Japan. Thank you all for watching, and I will get the Bill Cosby video out later today if YouTube allows it. Thank you all for for subscribing, and we're getting closer to that 100,000 100, uh, subscriber mark. Thank you.